All right, everybody. How are we doing tonight in Jackson? Yeah, not so good, huh? Okay. Are y'all all ill? Uh, no, I'm really glad everybody's here tonight at Offbeat Comics. We got a really good show planned for you guys tonight, and I really, I'm really glad to be hosting everything tonight. I really am. I hope the firm believe the jokes get funnier the further you travel to tell them. So we got joke. Uh, that's why comedians go on tour. It's a little known fact. But we got com comedians here from Memphis, uh, Columbus, Mississippi. All uh, I'm just from a mile down the road, so that may explain my jokes tonight. I uh, I am from Mississippi, guys. I know I don't have the accent. I don't start sounding southern unless I'm trying to get, make a little old white lady happy, or the police. Yeah, you hear me talk to either one of those guys, I start sounding like I belong on the porch of John Deere dealership, and. Uh, We'll start calling everybody sir and ma'am and everything real quick like. Got a little something up here in the front of my mouth that can't quite spit out. And I'm gonna have to keep there if I'm gonna be talking to you. Start getting me get start getting me nervous, drunk, or angry, or around the police, and I start sounding like Jefferson Beauregard Sessions. <laughs> Jefferson Beauregard Sessions is a great name for a bluegrass album, but a terrible name for an attorney general. <laughs> Oh man, uh, let's see. Everybody, everybody. I've been I've been online a lot lately. Everybody online is talking about eating ass. It's true. They are. Everybody online is talking about eating ass all the time. And I mean, I'm I'm not saying I'm not here for that. I'm just saying the price of chitlins keeps going down. So some of you motherfuckers are lying. <laughs> If you really like it that much, you can go down to Piggly Wiggly, spend three bucks, and get all the ass you ever wanted to eat. <laughs> Me? I like to eat booty just like groceries. That's a thing people say. I just said it. And by that, I mean I like it to be picked out by highly trained foreign workers, washed three times in a sterile facility, wrapped in plastic, and sold to me. <laughs> Over the internet, sure. <laughs> Why not? I don't know how you buy your groceries, but... Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Uh, let's see. Um, you guys ever... I, I want to do a rodeo one day. I've never done a rodeo. I want to do one rodeo just so I can tell everybody there, hey, look, man, this is my first rodeo. <laughs> Lay off. <laughs> Haven't done this before. This is not my first comedy rodeo, though, guys, believe it or not. Um, if you like this t-shirt, you know, you guys, I, I, I made this t-shirt. That's right. I got a job in a sweatshop. <laughs> but any shop that I am is technically a sweatshop. So if you're sweaty like me, any shop can be a sweatshop. This is technically a sweatshop he's running right now because I am sweating my balls off. <laughs> All right, well look, I, I know nobody really paid to see me up here, but you'll get to see me later too. So well, we're gonna, we're gonna get, a, get into our first act first. Uh, you guys know our first act, she's from here in Jackson. Everybody in Jackson loves her. I am looking for her desperately, hoping she's not hiding. Holly Perkins, there you are. You're in the dark spot, I can't see, I'm old. All right, everybody, look, uh, let's give it up for your first comic, Holly Perkins, everybody. the jokes are better the farther away from home you are, knowing that I live like a block away from here. <laughs> so thanks, I live in Belly Um But glad to be here, glad we have some out of towners. Um, coming to town, love Jackson. Um, living in Jackson is really fun. Like you get to, um, you know, you learn a few things. You're not as basic as you were before. Um, I say that while I'm also just, this is a part of my act, really. I just want to share this with you guys. I'm drinking 
spiked sparkling water, <laughs> which is the most basic bitch drink anybody's ever heard of. It is like LaCroix that gets you wasted. Um, it's a little dangerous, but it's delicious. Anyway, um, <laughs> you learn things here. Like, uh, one time somebody told me like, oh, I heard Lavinia Jackson, you learn the difference in like a car backfiring and a gunshot. Is that true, can you tell? And I was like, <laughs> Please. We can tell the difference in like a celebratory gunshot and an aggressive gunshot. <laughs> like we hear like pew, 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 when we go like, oh no, somebody just graduated high school. Fair <laughs> It's not gonna get killed. No, that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Uh, and I, I kind of sometimes start to think that I'm like kind of a hard ass, like I'm not like, I'm scared. Um, but then I'm like really often reminded that I am. Kind of, kind of a basic bitch. Like, um, one time I lived in this apartment in Jackson, and I lived across from a drug dealer. Nice dude though, and <laughs> <laughs> never had a problem with him. Except for one time, he locked somebody in a car and lit the car on fire. Well, first he drove it into our apartment building, and we all had to evacuate because the car blew up. And I was like, oh shit, look, grabbed all my stuff, ran outside, and was like, this is some real Jackson shit. <laughs> um, and I thought, like, I'm a real badass. And then I looked down, and the first shoes I had grabbed to run out of my house, they were Ugg boots. So I was like, damn it, you're still such a white girl. You ran out because a drug dealer killed a guy, but you ran out in your Ugg boots, so it negates itself, kind of. Um, and like one time, uh, I had a sex room about Dave Matthews. Um, of the Dave Matthews band. And I like, woke up and was like, was that Dave Matthews? And so I Googled it and it certainly was Dave Matthews, um, which is like a person of color has never had that experience, I don't think. So, um, you know, that's, that's the thing. Um, I used to be a teacher. I like to transition into that from sex dreams. Um, and it was weird being a teacher because I always just thought like, I would just say the weirdest things to kids, and I always thought they were saying the weirdest things to me, and a lot of times they weren't. Like one time a girl asked me what superstition mean, meant, and I said, it's when you believe in things you don't understand, which is not the definition of superstition, <laughs> but it is a Stevie Wonder song. So, <laughs> I'm not a teacher anymore. Um, <laughs> Cause I'd be like, I don't know, pop culture, but uh, Google it. <laughs> Why are you asking me questions? Ask Siri, that's what she's here for, it's her job. Um, like one time I had this kid and it was just me and him alone in the classroom and he goes, oh no. He goes, Miss Perkins, you got periods? And I went, yeah, <laughs> yeah I do. And he went, what period is this? And I was like, what is it, the 24th? <laughs> And he goes, I have math for third period. And I went, oh, class periods, because you're eight, and you're not asking me about my menstruation. You're asking me about class periods because we're in a classroom. That makes a lot more sense. I'm not a teacher anymore. Um, I'll transition into this one. Uh, so my childhood home recently burned down. And people were like, are you so upset? Like, so many memories. And I was like, no, like, I don't really have a connection to my childhood home because my mom had a hysterectomy, so, and that is the joke about the uterus. Um, and people, a uh, hysterectomy is when you get your uterus removed, and that's where babies are, so that's what that joke means. Um, and people tend to say, like, oh, female comedians just talk about their vaginas too much. And I haven't made a joke about my vagina, but I haven't talked about my mom's uterus, so let's transition into that being the future. Um, my mom is really funny. She has, uh, she's a brain injury, and so she forgets words a lot. And one time she called me and she was like, hey, did you ever get any strap-ons? Oh. Yeah, and that was kind of my reaction. I was like, uh, can, can you ask me that again? And she said, did you ever get any strap-ons? And I was like, mom, I'm gonna say back to you what you just said to me. Did I ever get any strap-ons? And she said, yeah, you needed some strap-ons because you're going to the beach. And I was like, I don't know what you're saying, but I'm very uncomfortable. And she's like, for your feet. And I was like, sandals. 
You mean sandals, yeah. that's that word. They don't, they, they strap on your ankle, sure, but they are not called strap-ons, mom. She was like, right, sandals. Oh, strap-ons, oh no. And I was like, yeah, this is a really bad conversation. Yeah. Uh, I have conversations like that a lot with my parents. One time, uh, my dad and I were talking about how Donald Trump wants to fuck his daughter. Um, Ivanka, not Tiffany. Um, Ivanka's like, like Tiffany is like when you accidentally open front camera and you're like, oh shit, that's what I look like. And Ivanka's like when you're prepped for a selfie and you know your ankle and shit. Um, so he wants to fuck Ivanka, right? So we're talking about this and he, uh, you know, he has said, if maybe if she were my daughter, perhaps we'd be dating. And my dad, upon hearing this, goes, oh, well, that's good. You can feel good about that. I wouldn't date you even if you weren't my daughter. <laughs> and I was like, thanks, Dad? Like, a uh, little Freudian moment here, because, like, why, though? Like, why would I be not dateable? Like... We like the same music. I look a lot like mom. Like what? What would be there? Um, <laughs> dating is is weird though. Um, I used to date a guy that vaped, and um, it was not cool. And I hated it because I would like be we'd be sitting in the house, and I'd be like, did did you eat cinnamon rolls? And you'd be like, oh no, I got a new vape cartridge. And I'd be like, what the fuck? Why would you do that? And then I would get really mad for two reasons. One, because we didn't have any fucking cinnamon rolls. Two, because I was so mad about not having cinnamon rolls. And I was like, is this normal? Is this like a fat person thing? Like, are normal people mad when they smell food that's not there to this level? And that was the real pissed. Um, yeah, he was not a good boyfriend. Um, <laughs> you know, but he was just like a real liar. And uh, I feel like it's ironic, and that's kind of how a lot of men tend to be. And part of that is because uh, Wonder Woman is like the it superhero, hot ass woman right now. Her weapon is a lasso that just makes men tell the truth. <laughs> and that's, that is the thing where you're like, oh no, the lasso of truth. That's how bad men don't want to tell the truth about things, and that it is a weapon against them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a friend that recently got engaged, and she posted on Facebook about how like she had found her prince charming and blah 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 all the shit, and um, she wrote about how her first crush was Prince William, and she always knew that she would find her prince, and now she's found her prince, and um, blah, 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 and I was talking to my mom about it, and I was like, I don't even remember who my first crush was, and she was like, oh, I do. It was a problem, um, because it was uh, Charlie Sheen in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> Not even one of the good ones. Not like Red Dawn Charlie Sheen. If you're unfamiliar, in this movie, he has a cameo in which he plays a junkie in a jail. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, you took a picture of him with your disposable camera and had it in your room. <laughs> That's how much I liked Charlie Sheen. So she liked Prince William and has now found her prince. And I liked Charlie Sheen and that is telling about my dating life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, it's hard to date in the summer too because I'm very clammy. Um, so we're not going to hold hands or anything. Like, don't touch me. Don't touch me during the summer. Uh, call me this fall. We'll talk. Um, I'm too clammy for so many things. Like, uh, I can't go to church because they hold hands to pray. Um, I can't go to AA because they hold hands at the end of meetings. So now I just have to drink and sin all the time because I'm fucking clammy. Uh, it's just single drinking Harlot, what do they call it? Heretic. Heretic. <laughs> I like that you, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, what do they call people that are not religious? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I did recently stop being so lazy, though, um, when I realized that um, I was putting on my underwear and they were inside out. And I was like, mm, fuck it, they're like half up already. I'll just wear them inside out today. Um, yeah, so I'm too lazy to continue this comedy, though. So that is my time. Woo! Thank you guys so much.
Thank you. Everybody give it up again for Holly Kiddens. All right, that was great. Uh, Holly, I commend you for at least not being so lazy as that you put on underwear. I've done that since 1998. Uh, now, in case you missed me earlier, my name's Patrick Jerome. Uh, I am Jackson's premier Karl Marx impersonator. Uh, so, uh, but look, we're about to bring another comedian up here today. She's traveled all the way from Columbus just to be here tonight to tell us jokes. So, uh, everybody give a big round of applause for Mandy Lack. Thank you for getting my name right. It's not a hard name. Uh, you guys like dogs? Yeah, I love dogs. I have eight. You want one? Anybody? It's not a joke. Anyway, uh, my main dog, I foster dogs, so I have a lot. Uh, and my main dog, he's a black lab, and I thought it would make him a badass if I named him Django, you know? And he's, he's the biggest pussy I've ever met. Like, if a little kid comes up to him, he'll just squat down and start peeing, and I'm like, damn, I should have named you R. Kelly. <laughs> I had to explain that joke to an older person. They were like, who is R. Kelly? I was like, well, uh, he pees, never mind. <laughs> Very awkward. Um, hello. <laughs> Glad you guys could make it. Uh, so I'm the youngest of six uh, kids, and it kind of sucks because all of my siblings have bigger boobs than me, even my brother has bigger tits than I do. This is a padded bra, okay? Um, I get a lot of shit a lot of the time about being skinny, and I hate it, you know? This one dude, I work at a bar, you can come in. Oh. <laughs> uh, she was scared. Oh, okay, oh, okay, I didn't know. Thank you for telling me. One time in Oxford, uh, this girl wasn't listening to a comedy night, and I was real drunk. I was like, bitch, can you not read? It's comedy night. Why are you talking? I didn't know it was the owner's niece. And I called her a four-eyed cunt. I'm sorry. I did. I don't remember it. I watched the video, though. <laughs> anyway, uh, I got banned from the Blind Pig in Oxford for about five years. They just invited me back, though. I got to walk with the Proud Ladies. So it was, it was an accomplishment for me. Anyway, I was talking about boobs. Uh, anyway, so I work at a bar in Columbus, and this guy looked at me, and he's like, Damn, girl, you need the pizza buffet. I was like, hey, fatty, don't fucking talk to me like that. And he was like, all right. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't really like going to New Orleans either because everybody wants to see your tits, and they're like, get out of the way, little boy. I want to see some tits. <laughs> Damn it. Um, hmm. So we run open mics in Columbus, and I've had we have a we have an Air Force base there, so we have a lot of pilots that come in and out. And some pilots decided that they wanted to try stand up, so I was like, okay, go ahead. They might bomb. I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad you guys laughed. They did not. <laughs> uh, this is just really random. This is not really a joke, but my roommate just told me on the way here that uh, she had a dream about Darth Vader, and at the end of the dream. He pulled his mask off and it was me. I don't know what that means, but I'm worried. I think it's because I have eight dogs and she <laughs> hates me. <laughs> um, I have, so I do have eight dogs. I have one that likes to hop the fence and about two weeks ago he hopped the fence and he got hit by a car. So I took him to the vet. Uh, he's in the process of getting fixed and he only really got hit in the head. And his name was Handsome Ralph. Cause I had an ugly Ralph outside and they're both yellow and I just was lazy about naming them. And uh, anyway, now he'll, he, he's recovering, his, his head's still kind of swollen, but he's getting there and I don't want to put a leash on him cause I don't want to hurt him. And he'll go outside and he's gotten kind of stubborn here recently and he doesn't want to come back inside. And so I went over one day and I was like, go inside Ralph, you're very handsome, but get the fuck inside. And he wouldn't, he just sat there and looked at me like, bitch, I know you're not gonna touch me. So I squeezed his tail and I was outside screaming. I was like, I'm sure the neighbors think I'm fucking crazy. Uh, anyway, he snuck into the backyard when I was taking care of the, the other dogs. And I was like, oh, now you want to stay in the backyard. It's a little too late, Ralph. Too fucked up of a joke. I've never tried that. It's true, though. That's just my life. My life is a joke. Um, so you guys are all from Jackson? Everybody? Yeah. Maybe? It's the first time I've ever been to Jackson. It's cool. Um, 
Definitely at home though. I lived in the hood for three years and Jesus Christ, I'm back now. <laughs> uh, living in the hood in Columbus, um, just I had a lot of random people come up to my house at random times. Uh, <laughs> one dude tried to sell me empty uh, tanks of gas, like just gas to light a heater. And he was like, I'll give them to you for $20. And I was like, dude, I didn't even say I wanted that. Like, why did you go home and get that? Why'd you bring that back to me? And then I picked it up and I was like, dude, it's fucking empty. You think just because I'm a girl, I'm an idiot, I'm gonna buy it? Get the fuck off my porch. What the fuck's wrong with you? I'm getting Django. <laughs> uh, hmm. So, uh, I'm from Delaware. Anybody ever been there besides that guy? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. It makes me so happy. <laughs> um, anyway, so, there's a huge music festival in Delaware going on right now, actually. It's called Firefly. Uh, I'm not there because I'm broke. And, but I'm here, so I'm happy. Anyway, uh, my birthday's coming up. And about five years ago, I went to Firefly and had one of the worst birthday experiences ever. Because my dad texts me. And I love my dad, but he texts me and he meant to text my stepmom on my birthday. And he said, ha ha, you can be on top tonight, winky face. And I was like, the fuck? This was right after I longboarded to the venue and I was wearing yellow pants, bright yellow pants. And I was like, oh, everybody's looking at me. And I'm just kind of surprised I even stayed on the fucking longboard because I don't know how to longboard. And I got there and I was like, I really feel like everybody was looking at me. And I went to the porta potty and realized I had started my period. Yeah, and I came out and I was like, I ran up to the first girl I saw, I was like, give me a fucking tampon. And she was like, okay, I can hear, just don't rob me. Um, I had a guy a couple weeks ago ask me, and he was like, oh, I, I think he asked me if I was on my period, or if I was pregnant because I was drinking pickle juice. I was like, no, actually I'm bleeding right now. And he was like, ew, I don't, I don't wanna know that. I was like, well, why'd you ask about my pussy then? <laughs> um, <laughs> You know? So I got a cat named Spock. Um, and when I first got him, I I was going to get some weed and I told my friend, I was like, hey, when we go to get the weed, ask the dude, can I pay for it with my pussy? So she did it and the guy was like, hell yeah. And then she pulls the cat out and he was like, the fuck is wrong with you? And I was like, man, I wish I could have recorded that, but for obvious reasons, I cannot. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I graduated from Ole Miss back in 2012. Uh, and then the same day I got a diploma, I hit a roadblock and got a felony charge for having three ounces of pot in my car. Apparently that's illegal. <laughs> in some states. <laughs> it wasn't. Anyway, uh, so I took a, a long hiatus from comedy. Because um, I started about nine years ago, but there was about three years where I didn't do comedy because I couldn't be in a bar. Because I was a felon. Um, anyway, I started comedy about a year ago and it's a little weird doing it again. It's kind of like that one time I had cum in my nose. That burns. Anybody in here ever had cum in your nose? I've met one other person and that was a very odd conversation because I was like, you too? And she was like, oh shit hurts. I was like, god damn, I'm not the only weirdo. Anyway guys, I'm going to stop stepping on this shit. I'm going to get back to the comedy. Uh, I'm Mandy. I'm from Columbus. We have a an open mic the second Tuesday every month in Columbus. If you guys ever feel like coming out and getting weird, thank you. All right, check this, give it up for Mandy one more time. Mandy, this is actually a very nice neighborhood. This is the best This road. This road outside is, is spectacular. It's like floating well, down. It's like floating down a river of water. It's amazing. It's like you never. Uh, it, the rest of the roads in Jackson may not be quite this nice. The rest of the roads in Jackson sometimes make me jealous of the uh, Mad Max movies. Like I see a Mad Max movie and it's the post-apocalypse. The bombs have fallen. People are eating each other for food, and it's like, but damn, those roads are nice. <laughs> If I tried to take a war rig at 95 miles an hour down State Street, I'd get eaten by a bunch of cannibals before I got done because that shit would lose all its wheels. So I'm just saying, you know, if, if maybe if nuclear war brings on uh, better infrastructure, maybe somebody should pretend to be China and start tweeting at the president. I don't know. Radical solutions, people.
All right. Uh, so let's see. Let's let's bring up our next comic. Um, the next comic's coming all the way from Memphis. Uh, please, please put your hands together for Johnny Bradsby. Thank you, thank you. How's everybody doing? Everybody make some noise for everyone you've seen so far. It's fucking awesome. That, uh, it's really cool that everybody's here at Austin Comics. I, I feel at home here. It's fucking awesome. Uh, I know some of y'all are looking at me a little bit weird. I'll explain it. I'm mixed. That's what it is. I'm half black, half white. I'm not a terrorist. I've been known to be called Terrorist Drake at some points. You used to call me on my cell phone! Like that's... That's who I look like, I guess. Uh, but no, I'm... I'm mixed and I, a lot of people usually have questions when they hear something like that, so I'm gonna answer some of the questions that I know you guys have. Uh, yes, I can see in color. Uh, white women exclusively, and, <laughs> and I can't say nigga, and I will say nigga because here's the thing, okay? I don't feel like the word nigga has the same power it did back in the day. Like nowadays, I feel like it all comes down to timing. Like if I'm in class and someone's like, hey, pass me that pencil, nigga, fine, cool with that. Same dude goes, hey, pass me that pencil, nigga. Now we have a problem. <laughs> Why did you have to think and then come up with a nigga like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm mixed, that's what you expect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about race, so I need you guys to loosen up. I'm gonna talk about race, okay? And you have to expect me to talk about race because I'm half black, half white. The same way you'd expect like a blind comedian to come up here and like face the wrong way the whole time. And then he'd say shit like, my mom said what you see is what you get, and I don't see a damn thing. Like... <laughs> I'm gonna talk about race, that's what I do. And uh, it's funny being mixed like this because everybody always has a ton of questions. And uh, one of the ones I always get is, what was the first like racist thing that happened to you, right? And uh, I grew up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And if you don't know what part of the country that is, it's the part of the country where white people got together and they're like, hey, uh, cowboys forever, right? We wanna be cowboys <laughs> forever, that's what we wanna do here. <laughs> And that's where I grew up, so I was like five years old, right? I was five years old and I was outside playing, and this little white girl comes up to me, and she goes, hey, are you a nigger? And I didn't know, because I was five, like, I didn't know. So I did what any five-year-old would do in that situation, I went home and I asked my parents, right? Now my dad, who's white, he's on the phone with his boss, and I come through the door, a lot of shit, boom. Mom, dad, am I a nigger? So I don't have to call you back. Oh, I like. <laughs> but my dad was prepared for it. He'd been training for it his whole life. He looked at me and said, look, son, she's jealous. You have two. You're white and black. She only has one. She's white. That's why she's being like that. Right? And then my mom, who's black, was like, where that bitch stay at? Where that bitch live? And I took her there, and... <laughs> We show up at the little girl's house, right? We show up at the little girl's house, and my mom knocks at the door, and her mom is there, and my mom is instantly on her. Why's your daughter asking my son if he's a nigga? Huh? She goes, I don't know. I don't know where she could have got that from. My mom said she got it from your racist ass. <laughs> if you don't have any more nigga questions, I'm the only nigga on the block so you can address him to me. <laughs> I was like, it's a cool fucking way to handle that situation. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I grew up with, and you know, I wasn't the only one that got crazy questions. My parents got crazy questions too, they're a biracial couple, walk around with a biracial baby. So they get questions, people come up to them, hey, how are you raising him, white or black? How the fuck do you answer that question? If they say black, what does that mean? What does that mean, is my dad's not there, or does that mean like he's there, but he's in blackface till I'm like 18 years old? And he's like, surprise, motherfucker! Like. <laughs> That would be hilarious if that's how that worked, though, like, my white dad. <laughs> Could you imagine him, like, trying to adjust to his life back after they do the gas station? Like, I need $20 on puff I'm sorry. I just got done raising my son black for 18 years. Like, <laughs> I, it was hard growing up like this. It really was. I had, I had different struggles, and what doesn't translate well to, like, other people is, like, I don't care about other like marginalized groups because I was from a marginalized group that nobody gave a shit about, right? <laughs> like I got in an argument with a transgender person the other day, right? 
And transgender people always love to steer the argument towards something like this. You have no idea what it's like to be me. And I'm like, really? I'm mixed. If you don't think I've gotten the question, what are you, just as much, if not more, than you have. <laughs> She's like, well, you don't know what people call me. I'm like, do you not realize, like, do you know what it's like to have people rotate through insults to see what's going to fuck you up? They're like, hey, you fucking terrorist, I'm not Middle Eastern. Well, then go south of the border again. I'm like, not fucking Mexican. They're like, well, I, I'm like, just call me the N words and let's fucking get it going, okay? <laughs> so what I grew up with, I have all these fucking crazy views on things now. Like, I grew up in a crazy household. Like, I got an argument once with my mom because we were talking about Terrence Howard. You guys know who Terrence Howard is? All right, so Terrence Howard. I was like, oh, I love Terrence Howard, and my mom interrupts me. She goes, I hate Terrence Howard. He looks like he smells like pee. <laughs> so what are you talking about? She goes, Jonathan, all light-skinned brothers smell like pee. I said, mom, I'm a light-skinned brother. She said, I live with your piss-smelling ass for 18 years, bitch. <laughs> With, right? I grew up with this just fucking crazy mentality towards things. Like, here's the thing. Like, one of my favorite things about being mixed is that there's some people that still just can't fucking accept it. You know what I mean? Like, I can't be white and black. I have to be one or the other. And they always like to ask, like, probing questions like I don't know. Be like, hey, Johnny, uh, what's your favorite food? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, fried chicken with a side of parsnips, motherfucker. What you do? <laughs> And I fuck them up. And then my music choice, I love my music choice because when anybody gets in a car with me, they don't know what the fuck they're going to hear. And it blows their mind every time. Like, you know those old commercials back in the day for like hits of the 80s and they show like 10 seconds of each uh, song? If it was one of like hits of Johnny, it'd be like, it's hard to say what it is I see and you wonder if I'll always be. Don't this shit make a nigga want to jump, jump, don't this shit make a nigga want <laughs> Mr. Jones and be like, <laughs> 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 that's it. It's mentality, man. So I grew up. It was hard in school too because I was like the first mixed person in my area. I was in Cheyenne. I was the first fucking mixed person. Like, you know what that means? I'm like the byproduct of the greatest rivalry of all time. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like everybody, be like, I get what you're trying to do, but I don't want to fucking see it. Like it is. <laughs> Now specifically for the comic book store. <laughs> it's hard growing up like this, it really is. But you know, I, I think I turned out an okay person. You know, I still get upset about certain shit. Like I was listening to the radio the other day and a little Wayne Birdman song came on. And I got furious because here's the thing. If you have to edit 80% of the song, why the fuck is it on the radio? You know what I'm talking about? These were the lyrics from said song. I got that with my beauty. And that, <laughs> with my people, like fuck you, that's, <laughs> why is that on the radio? But that shit got me thinking, right? And Birdman was on the song, you guys know who Birdman is from Young Money Cash Money? Alright, so here's the thing with Birdman, alright? How come every music video you see Birdman in, the motherfucker look like he putting on lotion for the entire music video? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Here's my impression of Birdman in every music video you've ever seen him in. <laughs> that little bird thing, that's not a gang sign. You gotta get those creases. That's what that shit is. And then that shit got me thinking. Here's a... <laughs> Here's something that people, there's a, there's a big thing that people don't talk about with mixed kids, and it frustrates me because it's a big issue and nobody ever addresses it, and that's lotion, okay? Because here's the thing, I'm mixed, I don't need as much lotion, but when I go and visit the black side of my family, these motherfuckers use lotion like it's going out of style, and <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but when you get lotion from a black person, you don't get to hold the bottle, like you don't get to choose how much lotion you get. <laughs> And I always end up with way too much lotion, and I'm just like, you guys know I don't need all this. Like, at a certain age, I was like, they're fucking with me at this point. <laughs> but I did fuck up, because the last time I went to visit, they started using this new shit, right? They started using this new shit. It's called crack butter. 
And I don't know if you've ever heard of crack butter. What crack butter is, it comes in a little can that looks like Crisco, right? And you just take a little fingertip and it oils up your whole body. It looks like you're about to get deep fried, right? <laughs> and I fucked up and I took too much and I forgot my grandma had circle doorknobs. So <laughs> I'm in the room and I'm trapped, like. <laughs> <laughs> the hell <am> I <laughs> Something nobody talks about. Let me get away. I'm get away from that. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. I am married now, so that's pretty cool. Um, I did the whole thing before marriage, like the whole single life. Single life. Is there any single people in the audience? Make some noise if you're single. Yeah. Because it's fucking hard for the single people. But when I was single, I had extra stimulation. I was always fucking broke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like, here's the thing, like, I don't like lying to women, but when you're single and you're broke, you fucking have to. That's just it's what you have to do. Like, I don't know, guys, back me up. Have you ever been like running that real good game with a lady and you fucking know you're getting somewhere, right? You're hitting all the right lines, and in the back of your head, you're like, I have seven dollars in my bank account. <laughs> I hope she doesn't want to fucking go anywhere. Like, <laughs> like, have you ever been so broke? Like, have you ever bought so little gas? that you stand at your car pumping fake gas for like two minutes just so people don't know your situation. It's a fucking track, it's hard. And I dated out of my league. I was a piece of shit. I dated way out of my league. Like, I remember there's a specific date. I went on a date and we were at this fucking bar and they didn't serve draft beer and I should have known, like, this is not my place. Like, right now. <laughs> I'm a, and then I asked the question, I was like, so how was your weekend? And she goes, oh, my, my brother just made partner, so he took us out on his partner's yacht, and we swam with the dolphins until the sunset. She's like, what did you do this weekend? I was like, well, one of my dudes got off probation, but he's banned from like half the bars around here, so we just dug a hole and burnt shit in it. Like, <laughs> found a wife and it was a beautiful experience it really is it was fucking beautiful to find the person that you love and uh what's funny is i have a lot of friends that aren't uh married and they ask me like well what's the biggest change from dating to marriage and the biggest change is the arguments it really is because when you're dating the arguments you're like individuals you have views like i remember when we were dating our arguments would be like i can't believe your stance on abortion and politics it's preposterous now the arguments sound a little bit more like this Bitch, I told you, if you, you have to get a pizza, a drink, and a side for the fucking coupon to work. No, I'm not fucking lying about the goddamn coupon. I've used it five fucking times. I know what the goddamn coupon is, motherfucker. Oh, yeah, fine. Call your fucking dad. No, call him. He's not going to fucking know what the coupon is. He doesn't fucking need it, Papa John's. <laughs> they said I'm crazy. I have crazy views on shit. Like, I read this the other day. Here's a, I, I got an argument with someone because they were trying to quote the internet, right? They were like, the information is on the internet, so it's out there and it's right. And I was like, dude, you know what? They're like, I Googled it. And I was like, you know what I Googled the other day? Toaster with titties. And you know what I got? You know what I got? I got a picture of a toaster with titties. And it was getting titty fucked by a microwave. Like, so... Information on the internet is now like there's an asterisk next to it at least, right? So there's no way it can be all the way true if that's right there. It'd be the same thing if you bought a book on the Holocaust and it had stats and pictures of personal accounts, and then on page 33 it was like, hey, here's a banana if it had a dick and was in the Ku Klux Klan. Like, don't you think <laughs> you'd look at that book and be like, I can't trust anything else in this book. <laughs> I got, and someone told me the other day that, uh, do you know there's a town in Orlando where people who work at Disney World, they all live in the same town? Yeah. It's fucking cool. And a normal person would hear something like that and be like, that'd be a cool place to raise some kids. They get the whole Disney experience. Me, I'm like, I want to meet the fucked up couple. You know what I'm talking about? Like Rick and Melissa, the people who invite people over just to argue in front of them. Because those arguments would be insane. <laughs> You know, talking about like Rick be drinking and spill some salsa on the shirt. Be like, oh, sorry, I'm a little drunk. And must be like, you're always fucking drunk, Rick. I'm like, here we go. And he goes, you know why I'm always fucking drunk? Because I play Jafar, damn it. Every morning I get up, I go to work, and I make little kids fucking hate me. Sorry, Rio can't be like you and play Ariel all the fucking time. 
And she's like, oh, you don't like that I play Ariel? He's like, no, I love that you play Ariel, but you're playing the wrong one. I want you to play the one halfway through the movie that doesn't have a fucking voice because I'm tired of hearing your bullshit all the fucking time. And she's like, fuck you, Rick, fuck you. And he's like, yeah, fuck you too, you bitch. You bibbity-bobbity bitch. Like, Transition, I got a kid on the way. <laughs> now, if I do have a kid on the way, that's really fucking cool. No, don't, 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 don't clap. Because here's the thing, the only great thing about the kid is when the kid is actually here. Because everything right now is just fucking disgusting. Like, I love, I love my wife, but she burps now. Like, I get that women burp. I don't, like, you know, I get that they burp, but it used to be like, Excuse me. Excuse me. Now she stares me in the face and is like, ah! What you did to me? Ah! Everybody's like, well, it bounces out, right? Because her titties are getting bigger. I'm like, yeah, they're getting bigger. But what they don't tell you is that they're so sensitive, they're like fucking burn victims. Like, I got yelled at the other day. She's like, Jonathan, you walk past too fast in the air, graze my titty in the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> and having a kid's scary, it really is, it really is. So I do what everybody does, and I'm calling my friends and I'm asking for advice. And I learned really quick, if you're asking for advice, you never ask someone who only has one kid. You want to ask someone who has multiple kids, because the person with one kid is going to be like, I want to give my kid the world. And a person with multiple kids is like, I want to give one of these motherfuckers away. <laughs> And that's who you want to talk to because they've seen the shit, you know what I'm talking about? I have one of these friends, and the thing is they never give you any advice. They just rant for like 10 minutes, and you got to pick out what's important. Like I thought, I was like, hey man, what do I do? He goes, god damn it, D-fucking batteries. He goes, no kid toys take normal size fucking batteries. He's like, they're all D and bigger. He goes, I bought one of those stupid fucking Jeep things. He goes, what kind of car? You know what kind of battery it takes? He goes, a normal fucking car battery. He's like, you know how fucking dangerous that is for children? He's like, you know how hard it is to explain electrocution to someone who can't fucking pronounce spaghetti? Paschetti? No wires, motherfucker, you're gonna die, don't... <laughs> so I'm scared, I'm scared, like, and I figure I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat my kids. I feel like there's no beating anymore. It's like, here's the thing. Because I grew up in the 90s, which was the golden age of beating children. Like, back in the day, if you didn't beat your children, you got looked at like people who beat their children today do. Like, it's a complete 180. And I used to get beat, and I got in an argument with my mom one time. She's like, name one time, Jonathan. Name one time it was out of control. I said, Mom, I had to play a whole soccer game with a wire hanger imprint in the side of my face because I didn't know how much soccer pictures were. She's like, that's one time, name another one. I said, how about the time I was cussing at school, you started beating me, I went like this. And you said, oh, you want a box? And I said, no! <laughs> so that opens this argument, how do you know if you're really beat as a child? Does anybody know the golden rule? If you don't know, I'll tell you right now. The golden rule is if the next day before school, your parents sat you down and they were like, now look, baby. If anybody asks what happened, you say that's none of your business. That's between me and my family, and don't judge us because you don't know our situation. But I was a little slow, so I didn't sit in the right way. I'm in school. The teacher's like, hey, Jonathan, do you know about the Holocaust? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, what happened? I said, that's none of your business. That's between me and my family, and don't judge us because you don't know our situation. I didn't just get physically beat, I got mentally beat as well. Like I would get beat and then she would sit me on the side of the table. She'd be like, look at you, you ain't mixed shit, bitch. She said, you gonna grow up and have a mick ass job, a mick ass wife, some mick ass kids. I'm on the other side of the table like, I'm eight, bitch, leave me alone. Like, then I'm 16 working at McDonald's like, fuck, she's right, like she nailed it. <laughs> Has anybody ever worked fast food or like a shitty job? You know what I'm talking about? 
They suck, but they're very necessary because they teach you about life, but they teach you all the wrong shit, you know? It's like having an Asian driving instructor. It's like I'm learning how to do it, but I'm pretty sure I'm learning how to do it wrong. <laughs> but the beautiful thing is you meet crazy people and you get to kind of adjust your life to that. And I remember I met this one crazy person, his name was Jeremy, right? And the thing about Jeremy was he always had some words of wisdom or words of advice, but he would put it in a rhyme and then he would sign it at the end. It was real weird. Like my first day, he was like, hey, keep your eyes on the prize, it'll be your demise. Jeremy! <laughs> okay? <laughs> a couple of weeks later, I'm working the window, this girl pulls up. She's like, ooh, you sound cute. How about you just give me something with some meat in it? I said, Jeremy, this girl sounds down. What do I do, son? He said, hey, you better wait till she gets in the glass before you ask for some ass. Jeremy! <laughs> One dude, he's one of those dudes that got laid a lot, but it was never with like a pretty chick. So it's like a hand job. It's like that's nice, but not really. And, <laughs> and he always looked us for confirmation, like, hey man, what you think of that girl I brought over last night? I was like, oh, you mean that fucking bridge troll that came over and poked holes in my couch with her back spikes? Yeah, she's a fucking keeper. If you're not laughing right now, you're the bridge troll, check yourself. But <laughs> Right, but it was one time he came and he was like, hey, look, man, I got, I banged this 10 last night. She's coming in, she's bringing me lunch, she's bringing me lunch. I was like, all right, cool, let's see it. Now, shit you not, ladies and gentlemen, when she pulled up and got out of the car, she was like this. Oh, shit. I said, dude, what the fuck? That's a 10 to you? He said, dude, look at her face. I said, dude, look at the chicken wing. <laughs> he came back and said, I'm black, I like chicken. I said, whoa, that is the worst thing. I have ever heard anybody say in my entire life. And then he topped that. He said, it feels good when she's feeling you up with it. I said, whoa, that is the worst thing I have ever heard anybody say in my life. And then he topped that. He said, you see how one leg's shorter than the other? When we do a doggy style, we're like this. I said, whoa. You're taking it too far, man, too far. Then all I hear from behind me is, if her legs mangle, do it at an angle. Jeremy. Great. That was great. All right, I, I'm, I'm just going to keep this uh, comedy train rolling. Let's bring on our final act of the evening. You guys, give it up all the way from Memphis, Tennessee, Doug Ellen. All right. Hey, guys. Oh, man. So, hey, you guys have been here since like 830, right? Oh, my goodness. Drink. Drink on me. Over there. Right over there. Oh, my God. Give it up for them real quick. They've been here since like 830. Oh, my God. And all y'all, that's for all y'all. You guys, thanks to gosh, Jackson. They told me they were like, hey man, you gotta this is a comic book shop in Jackson. I was fired up. I was excited. One of my coworkers was like, uh, oh Jackson. I live in Memphis. And they were like, oh Jackson. Was, they were like, be careful. <laughs> like, bitch, I live in Memphis. Like, what the fuck is Be careful. And I come down here and everybody's like super nice, you know? And then my core gives saying I'm gonna get mugged out here. And at this point, I'm kinda looking forward to it, you know? And then, yeah, the guy took all my money and pointed a gun in my face, but he asked me if I had a concussion before he whipped pistol with me, you know? Like, he was just really considerate. And then he drove me right to an ATM, like, showed me where it was, you know? Like, I mean, it was so he could take more money from me, but you know, like, still, I thought the thought was, was there. <laughs> I give it up for everybody you've seen so far tonight, guys. Johnny, Mandy, uh, Holly, uh, Patrick, it was fantastic. Wonderful place. Oh my God, you can't even just. Yeah, I'm, I'm Doug Gillen. Uh, Johnny and I, we, we travel from Memphis. We host a show there called The Tuesday Show. Um, I usually try and you know say my name when I come out, but nobody seems to remember. They just go, oh yeah, schlubby George Michael. He's okay. <laughs> like George Michael didn't die. Like he just got a job like at a Jiffy Lube or something, you know? <laughs> He's sitting there with his socket wrench, like, tune me up before you go, go. Come on in when your tires are low, low. <laughs> I'm not really that into 80s music like that, man. I'm not really into music that, like, requires some kind of, like, overhyped Biloxi DJ in between every single song, you know? 
Like, I feel like every Bengals song has to end with, okay, all right, this is Russ Turner here on 98, 98, 98. All right, we're just cruising along the coast here. All right, coming up next, we got George Michael. Oh, fuck. I did like a lot of kinds of music, though, man. I love being in a record shop like this. Like, one guy I loved, my first guy growing up, my first concert I ever went to, I'm not kidding. I know you guys can tell from looking at me, Brian McKnight, man. Brian McKnight, absolutely my first concert that I went to. I loved Brian McKnight as a kid, you know, like in middle school and stuff, like 90s music. I loved it. But when I got older, it was like, it was a little different because I started listening to that song, started back at one. You guys know that song? Yes! But it could kind of ruin the illusion a little bit older, you know, when I got to you, you guys know the song, right? It's like, one, it's like a dream coming true, two, just want to be with you, three, you know it's plain to see that you're the only one for me, and four, repeat steps of one through three, hang the fuck on. <laughs> and then his thing, he says, if I ever think my work is done, I'll start it back at one. Well, I don't think I can trust you with that kind of commitment. You can't even get through your own five-part list in one chorus, Brian, at night. <laughs> this is garbage. Stop listening to that. I got in a heavy metal, man. I got in a metal. Any metal heads in here? A couple? Okay, one guy's like, yeah. You seem like the least enthusiastic metal head that has ever been. I'm like, just like, any metal heads, you'd think someone would be like, yeah, fuck it up the arms, man. And he's just like, no. I go, it's kind of my thing. Yeah. I cut off all my personality with my hair. That's okay. Just don't worry about it. I loved heavy metal, man. I was big into Iron Maiden, you know, up the irons, right? Because if you listen to Iron Maiden concert, man, they're like, the metal guys should write every single advertisement ever because they can get you fired up about something in like half a second. Right? I listen to this live Iron Maiden album, and this guy just in the middle of the song goes, This next song is dedicated to everyone who supported metal in South America. This is Blood Brothers. I was like, shit, what have I done to support metal in South America? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not enough. Iron Maiden 2012, that's a new hit YouTube video, guys. It's coming out, that's a, okay. But I did, man, I loved heavy metal. My parents told me, they said, I had to stop listening to it, right? They said, if you play an Iron Maiden record, it has got satanic messages. It's gonna make you want to kill yourself. I'm like, I don't hear that. They're like, no, if you play it backwards, you have to play it, you, know, you have to spin it in other direction. I still didn't hear it, but I realized that there was a record like that about 10 years later when I played a Nickelback CD forwards. <laughs> That's when that shit really happened, you know? Like, I survived, but it's a close call. My parents didn't have to spend the rest of their lives looking at this photograph. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. But one thing I always love from start to finish, always, 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 man, from the day I discovered music up until now is Fleetwood Mac, man. I cannot get enough of Fleetwood Mac. Again, very polite rock fans here. They're just like, yes, we're, we're, yes, we, we agree. It's a good band. Blue and Matt, man, I love Stevie Nicks. I love everything about them. They were this band. They were like just some blues band, like your buddy's blues band. They kept changing members and stuff. And they hired Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham from Los Angeles. Stevie's the girl, Lindsey's the guy. It's 2017. I think we're all okay with that, right? And they hired these guys. They made two of the best albums ever. And they all had sex with each other in the meantime. They created a whole Wikipedia page full of rumors. It's just fantastic. And I got to see Stevie Nicks in Memphis about a month ago. It was great, one of the greatest experiences of my life. Stevie Nicks is 69 years old, okay? She's a grandmother, and she does not talk like a metalhead between songs, you know? It's, it's a little more extensive, you know? She'll be talking about the time she played ping, ball, ping pong ball, ping pong ball. <laughs> So we talk about the time she played ping pong with Prince, and then the next thing you know, she's like, yeah, I thought Hurricane Katrina was devastating when I looked at the ocean from my window on the beach. And she's like, okay, Stevie Nicks, that's all right. But it was emotional for me, man, because I loved her so much. She would do just one little thing that would just take you right into it. They were playing Gypsy by Fleetwood Mac, and I cannot tell you how emotional I got seeing a 69-year-old woman in stilettos turn around once. And just doing the song, she just goes, and I was crying, you guys. I was bawling my eyes out. I look over at my wife, her mascara is all fucked up. We're into it. It's a great experience. That's why she talks for 45 minutes between songs. You gotta catch your emotions, you know? At one point, she played this love song that you could tell nobody really heard before, but everybody was on board. It was beautiful. And when it was over, she said, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you for letting me share that with you. I wrote that song in 2005 about the greatest love, love story I've ever known, and I know any of us have ever known. Of course that song is about Edward and Bella. 
<laughs> I looked at the light and I was like, is Stevie Nicks fucking talking about Twilight right now? Like, like, she was! My wife was like, just calm down, Doug, as long as she's not talking about the second movie. And I was, next thing out of her mouth, just, when I saw that second movie, I'm like, for fuck's sake, Stevie <laughs> Like, she wasn't paid by Warner Brothers to write this, okay? It wasn't like an official soundtrack thing, okay? She saw the movie and was inspired to write the, I saw one of those Twilight movies. I was inspired to also kill myself. Like, that was about <laughs> Twilight 2, Breaking Duck, you know? That's what they called it. In my head, anyway. I mean, the second movie is the greatest love story I ever told you guys. You guys. You know the movie. It starts off with, like, Edward and Bella are together now, so we've lost any of that will-they-won't-they they tension. And then he takes her to a party, and she, like, pricks her finger, and all the vampires are, like, into her suddenly, you know? And, vamp and Edward, being, like, the mature adult 17,000-year-old individual that he is, decides he can't deal with the jealousy and just fucking leaves! And she gets so upset, she sits in front of a window for three seasons. Not like three TV show seasons. Like three seasons of the globe circling around the sun. You can see the seasons changing in her window as the camera turns. She misses the opening to Face Punch, which sounds like it's probably the new Die Hard. So that sucks. Tries to kill herself two times, doesn't make it. Then all of a sudden, things start looking up, right? She meets this guy named Jacob. He's got great teeth, cool hair. Got a great bod, and his mom likes her too. And by the way, his friends don't want to eat her, so that's a plus. And then Edward decides he wants to come back. He wants to see Bella again, right? But he can't just go back because, again, he's a very mature 17,000-year-old individual. So he has to ask fucking permission from his goddamn parents. Who are they? Yeah, the Anne Rice Illuminati goddamn vampires over there in Italy or some shit. And he goes over there, and he's hanging out with them, and they're just like, yeah, well, I guess, okay, you can date a human. Just don't sparkle too loud in the sun or something. And then he leaves, and he goes and sees Bella, and he's like, hey, Bella, I'm back. I want you back. And she's like, okay, I will get back with you on one condition. He says, what's that? She says, if you turn me into a vampire, because 20 six-year-old Kristen Stewart is really killing it right now. There's kind of an age gap on women in Hollywood. And if I hit 32, this is going to go way down. So I need some of that immortal juice right the fuck now. And he says, yeah, okay, I'll do that. They go to Jacob and tell him they're breaking up or whatever. And Jacob's like, why would you leave me for him? Like, he sucks. We've been through the whole movie of why he sucks, right? And she says, he's going to give me exactly what I want. And Jacob's like, are you? Are you going to do that? Are you going to give her exactly what, what she wants? And Edward's just like, yeah, man, I'm totally going to give her exactly what she wants. She's <laughs> completely, totally going to. And that's the whole fucking movie! <laughs> this is not... The greatest love story I ever told. No, if there's anything, this is a cautionary tale against abusive relationships, okay? Like, that's... So I thought, why the shit would Stevie Nicks care about this? And then I thought, well, it's basically the history of Fleetwood Mac, just with less werewolves. That's all that is. It's just... It's right there. One Fleetwood Mac fan in the, in the back is like, hell yeah. yeah that's what's up. That's cool, man. Yeah, I, I, this is just so... You know... It's such a crazy time right now. Like, you be in a place like this, you think about, oh, man, I'm around a bunch of Star Wars fans, and people who love Adult Swim and all that, and that's great. You feel you feel it one. And then you walk outside, and you realize that just a year ago, Twitter said they were going to boycott Star Wars because it had a black main character and was committing white genocide. <laughs> like, yeah. white genocide? You're a Star Wars fan? You're worried about genocide? Like, where the <laughs> fuck were you at the destruction of Alderaan? You know, like, what the fuck? <laughs> A billion voices cried out and were instantly silenced and you didn't say shit on Twitter! <laughs> Fuck off! I feel like Darth Vader's a much less intimidating villain like without the mask though, right? Like if he's just like some fat at-home racist, you know, like when he takes everything off, he's just wearing like a wife beater and some Imperial board shorts or something, you know? Like, he's, taking, he's taking apart like Cheetos with the force so he can eat them. He's getting into his mask. I feel like yeah, he'd have really outdated views, like if you really got to know him, you know, he'd be like, they're letting people use any bathroom they want on Alderaan now. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <sighs> See these Ewoks getting married? <laughs> Can't even put the Imperial symbol on a flag outside the courthouse anymore. <laughs> this is the bullshit! <laughs> <laughs> People are crazy. They're crazy! 
crazy people, what do they believe in now? They believe that anything Donald Trump says is real. They believe that Hillary actually knows how to use a computer to send emails. You know, what do they, they believe crazy <laughs> shit? 69-year-old grandmother, come the fuck on. <laughs> what was the time when like crazy people just believed in like ghosts and aliens? You know, like I miss that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was into. I always like believing in aliens because I saw some sometimes, you know, when I drank a lot of absinthe. <laughs> they were, their eyes were just as dilated as they were in the films, you know, like, boom. I like to think of, and I thought about it, I was like, aliens, they have to be drunks, right? Like, think about the evidence. Think about everything you've seen. Every time you see a flying saucer, it's like all wobbly, you know, and nothing like this straight line. And I knew aliens had to be drunk the minute I found out about cow, uh, uh, with this intergalactic cow tipping, right? This cow abduction. But like, you have an intergalactic spaceship, you can go anywhere in the universe. You don't go to the Eiffel Tower or Mount Everest or whatever. No, you go to a field in Montana and turn a cow inside out. This is not sober behavior, you know? <laughs> they watch E.T., it's obvious. Oh my God, how obvious. That drunk motherfucker. <laughs> they only say like two words at a time. Like, <laughs> 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 I feel like they probably cut down E.T. from like the original cut. Like the original cut, maybe he just talked all the fucking time like he was a little chatty drunk. <laughs> and they just cut it down to like the two words after he had too much. Like before that he's just like, <laughs> put me in the basket, dude. <laughs> dude, get that blanket right there. Yeah, no, right, yeah, I'm a little cold. Okay, cool. <laughs> but no, seriously, dude, put me in the basket. Okay, you're gonna put me. <laughs> Elliot, <laughs> Elliot, you know, put me in the basket. We're gonna pedal. We're gonna pedal, Elliot. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna pedal. We're gonna pedal towards that ramp. We're gonna go past the fucking moon, man, Elliot. Got to do this. I feel like the extra, the, the original uh, title for ET wasn't the extraterrestrial. It was ETU, so for extra turn up. <laughs> That's what he was the whole goddamn movie. You guys ever get so drunk that like you leave something where it totally shouldn't be? Like you leave a shoe in a bathtub or some garbage? I figure like with the aliens, they're so drunk. That's just how Stonehenge got made. You know, they were just like, where's our limestone? I don't know, Scotland? And it's over here. I feel like that's all the pyramids are. They're just big drunk alien Jenga boards. You know, like they just came down and they were like, hey, those Egyptians look cool, man. Let's party with them. They got drawn animal bodies, on, animal heads on people bodies, man. This is awesome. They build a big drunk alien Jenga board, but like they get too tired to actually play it. So they leave and they come back and like, where was our game? I don't know, man. And they go over to Mexico and they just build another one. <laughs> they keep doing this. They go like to Indonesia. They keep building drunk alien Jenga boards. And then they come back like a thousand years later, like, man, I'm kind of tired of drunk alien Jenga. Let's... Let's go over there to Easter Island. Let's play Guess Who, man. That'll be fun. <laughs> Where they have giant heads. It's cool, though, man. The, the Trump thing, uh, God, it, it drives me nuts. Does it drive you all nuts? Are we, like, on the same page here? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, Hillary, what the fuck did Hillary Clinton do? <laughs> like, are you, wait, you, you oh, you're going to run for president? Great. Who are you going to run against? Donald Trump. All right, so we just play, press start on presidential very easy mode. <laughs> like, you'd think. She's just too fake, man. She wouldn't be herself. No, kind of a Pandering all the time. She went on that, you guys know The Breakfast Club, that show in New York City? Oh, oh my God, yeah, right? Yeah, she went on The Breakfast Club in New York City. This is, a, this is an urban radio program, right? This is three black co-hosts she's sitting in front of, and they ask her like a rapid fire series of questions, and they said, what's one thing you keep in your bag all the time? And she says, hot sauce. Like she's about to get in formation. Like, come on, fuck you. <laughs> it's not appropriate. Guys, I'll tell you something about myself. I love Popeye's fried chicken. I think Popeye's fried chicken is one of the greatest things ever created in the history of the universe. I have the toilet scars to prove how much I love Popeye's fried chicken, okay, is what I'm telling you. But if I went on the breakfast club and I was sitting there and they asked me, hey, Doug Gillen, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? I'd be like, well, you know, Panera is pretty good. Like, that's a fun place to go. <laughs> Then the next question was, what's your favorite fruit? I'd just be like, not watermelon. <laughs> Here? No, no, it's not appropriate. I don't know how she got here, man. It, 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 it's crazy because there's like all this hate out now and like stereotypes are coming back like in full force. Not that they ever went anywhere, but they're coming back in like full force. Like I'm married to a Puerto Rican wife, okay? I have a Puerto Rican wife and... You know, she, it's, it's all good all the time, but people tell me like, oh, she's gotta be really fiery, right? She gotta, and I'm like, no, man, I have totally deserved it every time she's thrown a plate at me, okay? Like, <laughs> she's 
said a little bit of mustard on her hot dog. You know, just a little. It's a definite amount. And we've been married two years. It's been going good. You know, and it's amazing that we've been married that long. Because I am not like a romantic guy anymore. The minute I gave up on Brian McKnight, all that went out the window. Just like that. <laughs> like, I didn't do a, a sunset picture on Instagram or anything. Nothing like that. You know, when we got married, we were just sitting on the couch watching this uh, television show. And uh, this commercial with a lizard came on, right? And I just turned to her and I said, uh, baby, I figured out a way we can save a lot of money on car insurance. <laughs> And we did, you guys. That 30 bucks a month is really keeping us together. You know, because it's like, you get in a fight, you're like, oh, we should get divorced, but I like keeping the diamond member status. You know, like, that's important to me. I'm going to keep that along. She's great, though. I mean, it's great being married to somebody who's a little different than you, you know, because she'll come home somebody, she'll talk to me in Spanish, she'll do different things. Like, we don't even have to make uh, anniversaries or, or, or birthdays a big thing. We're always, she's always doing nice stuff for me. I'm always doing nice stuff for her. Like, the other day, uh, she went out and she bought a whole bunch of flowers. Uh, you know, like, like your flowers, you have to plant like plants and for, for herself. And then for me, she bought a shitload of gardening equipment, okay? Like it, was, it was very thoughtful. And I was sitting there playing video games, and uh, she just looked at me, she said, Hey, you know, I'm just playing Injustice 2 right now. And she's like, Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I love you too, baby. Like, thank you. That's. That's wonderful. In, in case you're trying to catch up, that means uh, get your ass up right now and plant these in the ground or else you'll be the one going under. <laughs> very, very kind, my wife. She's, uh, she's from California, Puerto Rican from California, so she doesn't know a lot about Memphis. Doesn't know a lot about Memphis. And she's always telling me, like, hey, Doug, you, you're from Memphis. Tell me about Memphis history. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got you. I can tell you all about it. Memphis history, man. I know all of it. I know all of the Memphis history. All of it, you guys. Every single bit. This guy's like, yeah, you can tell us some when you get around to it. Okay. So she was the same idea. We're driving down the road. She's tell me some Memphis history right now. Coming out of Target, I say, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that Popeyes right there? She's like, yeah. I was like, that used to be a Burger King. <laughs> all the Memphis history. All of it. People like to say she's fiery, I told you that before, but no, it's me, you guys. It's not, not the best thing to admit, but it's me. I'm the one who loses the temper. I don't know, we got people in relationships here, a couple people? Yeah, okay, back there. All right, sir. Sir, what's your name, sir? Melvin. Melvin. All right, so did you guys, when you guys fight, does somebody lose their temper every now and then? They look at each other like, they're like, they're like they're 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 They don't fight. Okay, guys, give it up for them. The first couple in history to ever not fight like unicorns back there. By unicorns and Jackson. Because he knows I'll cut him. <laughs> <laughs> she said because he knows I'll cut him. <laughs> That's how we met. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right after me, you'll see a feature. <laughs> but I'm the one, man. I'm the one who loses my temper. You know, I'm not proud of it, but I did it the other day. We were fighting about something. You know, I, I forgot about the dying member status, you know, and I did. I lost my temper. I was just like, hey, you know what? Some it. <laughs> and she did, you guys. <laughs> like, not even like ceremonially. Like, they're just putting it in her mouth and, and being done to prove a point. No, the entire job, start to finish. And when she finished with that job, she proceeded to continue with her argument. Which she won, because it is incredibly hard to argue with empty balls. You know, that's just... It's like, oh, yeah, man, whatever you, whatever you want, we're all good. But it's fun. It's fun being married to somebody different, but the modern climate, it's like, ah, and these things happen, and then it draws me back into, you know, the real world, the world outside of it, the world we all have to deal with all the time. And uh, that was happening just the other day. We were driving, uh, we were walking back uh, from lunch, and a lady drove by in a car, and she just said, hey, go back to Mexico! I was like, thanks for reminding her about that Cancun trip I canceled last year, asshole. Like, that's a, some bullshit. It goes, you hadn't been, all right? How do you respond to that? What do you throw a globe at them? You know, like say, go back to school? And what's the what's the response? I don't know, man. Uh, but I think, you know, sometimes we gotta be nice to people. Sometimes we gotta be nice to people. But sometimes uh, if somebody's coming up to us and they say, hey man, you gotta move. Uh, you know, maybe instead of just being nice, we say, no, you move. <laughs> the nerds in here will get that line is from Captain America Civil War which I think in the Trump administration is a documentary now. <laughs> I want to see 
Captain America Civil War, man, that's, that's been my favorite Marvel movie so far. I know everybody's got a lot of opinions. I know it's controversial to state what, like, but I love Captain America Civil War, man, because I had such a great experience seeing it. I went into that movie, I thought I was the biggest Marvel fan there, opening day. I had on my Captain America t-shirt, right? And then I was not at all, because there was an eight-year-old boy standing next to me, dressed up full Captain America regalia, there with his dad, who was dressed exactly like the Black Widow, you guys. It was amazing. <laughs> He was decked out. And we went inside, and this little kid was so excited, he would shout at the screen the entire time. You know? And when he heard that line about somebody saying, no, you move, he took that advice to heart. And there are a lot of times in that movie afterwards where somebody says, hey, you're wrong on this one, Cap. And the Cap has like some kind of witty retort. But I never got to hear it, because every time a character would say, hey, you're wrong on this one, Cap, that kid would just go, no, you are. I'm like, fuck, yeah, all right. <laughs> I wasn't even mad. Like, I heard this and I thought about it later and I was like, what a great way to relieve stress, you guys. I'm going to help you guys. You're going to try it with me. We can say this all the time in our regular life and it'll just fix everything. I'm going to show you guys. Here, do it with me. One, two, three. No, you are like that. One, two, three. No, you are. Perfect. Let's say you're at a bar. Definitely not this bar. But you've been there pretty late. Somebody says, hey, man, you've had too much to drink. What do you say? No, no you are. Yeah, fuck that. Stay there all night, right? Let's say you get a phone call and they're like, Mr. Gillen, you're three months late on your rent. What do you say? No, you are. Fuck yeah. Click, hang up, stay there forever. Let's say you go to a comedy show or a comic book shop and somebody says, hey, man, you were pretty funny. What do you say? No, you are. Oh, you guys are really sweet. Thanks a lot. I'm Doug Gillen. All right, guys. Here goes. Thanks for coming. All right, everybody. Give it a good right now. One last time. Everybody give it up for all the comments you've heard tonight. You guys are a great crowd. So, as the last thing, just clap for yourselves. But yeah, that was enthusiastic. I understand. It feels weird. All right, but look, everybody, we've had a wonderful night tonight. Uh, you guys keep keep looking on Jackson Jackson Comedy at website, Facebook, all that junk. You can find us online. We will announce all of the shows and things like that. So please pay attention. We have comedy shows. They're always this good. Yeah, okay, maybe not. But no, this was a great show. You guys were excellent. I'm glad everybody came out tonight. Give it up for your comics one last time. And you guys have a wonderful night. Be extra safe and try to try to sell somebody some old gas cans or something on your way out there. Let's go and contribute to the economy. Good night, everybody.